Hello and welcome to Enchanted Rose Costumes. My name is Marika and today I'm going to be sharing with you the third and final part of my constellation gown. If you haven't seen parts one and two, you can click the link above or you can head down to the description as I'll have the links posted there as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Using the same pattern books from part two, I enlarge the sleeve puff and the upper and under sleeve from page 117 of Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns. As with before, I started with the vertical marks and then squared the lines across the paper and added the horizontal marks. After placing all the marks, I then connected the dots to reveal the pattern. And then I repeated these steps for the upper and under sleeve. After mocking up the sleeve, I decided it wasn't quite the look I was going for, so I cut a curve into the front of the sleeve puff to create a high-low effect. And once I was happy with the pattern, I cut the sleeve puff of tulle. I then cut the upper and lower sleeve from taffeta, leaving seam allowance along the top and bottom edge as it wasn't included in the original pattern. Once all the pieces were cut out, including the underlayer for the upper and lower sleeve, I then pinned the taffeta and underlayers together to flatline them. And just like the bodice and skirt, I flatlined the pieces together, stitching them just inside the seam allowance. And then I searched around the raw edges. Next, to create the constellations, I traced out the design onto the taffeta. I used two different types of embroidery floss for the constellations. For the visible lines, I used a metallic light effect silver embroidery thread. and I used a silver cotton thread to couch the metallic thread in place. Once I had finished embroidering all the constellations onto the sleeves, I then added hot fix gems to simulate the stars. I used a variety of sizes of gems for visual interest. And after placing all the stars on the constellations, I added more gems randomly around the upper sleeve. Once all of the stars were in place, I then used a hotfix applicator to activate the glue on the back of the gems. Depending on the size of the gem, it took between 5 and 20 seconds for the applicator to heat up the glue. 
and once all the stars were attached, I then pinned the upper and under sleeves with the right side together and stitched them in place. Next, I stitched the sides of the sleeve puff together. And then I sewed two rows of gathering stitches along the top and bottom of the sleeve. While gathering the sleeve, I didn't want to gather it evenly all the way around. I wanted to leave some negative space between the inside of the sleeve and the waist to help create the illusion of a smaller waist. Once all the tool was pinned in place, I then stitched it together with a half inch seam allowance. I then graded the seams and then stitched a one inch wide strip of bias fabric to the right side of the sleeve. I then folded the bias strip to the inside of the sleeve and whipped it in place to finish the bottom edge. After finishing both the sleeves, I then pinned them to the bodice and stitched them in place with the gather side facing down. With these sleeves in place, it was time to decorate the gown with stars. Starting with the bodice, I randomly placed gems along the front and the back of the bodice. For the skirt, I had planned the placement of the constellations while I was designing it. I had decided early on in the planning stage that I wanted to try and replicate the northern and southern hemisphere on the skirt. So to the best of my ability, I copied out the summer northern hemisphere on the front and sides of the skirt and the southern hemisphere on the back of the skirt. There were many spots that I had to improvise as I mixed up the placement of some of the constellations, but overall I'm very thrilled with how it came out. I then spent many, many, many hours attaching the hotfix gems. I enlisted the help of my husband with some of the gems so I could finish packing for costume college. And I finished attaching all the gems in the hotel room while taking a break at Coco. So this is kind of a bonus project. The balayeuse, or the street sweeper, was a little thing that the Victorians used to protect the underside of a trained skirt. It's basically a bunch of ruffles that are attached to the underside of the skirt to support the train and keep it out of the dirt. 
From my understanding, it could have been stitched or buttoned on and removed when it was soiled. For my street sweeper, I cut several lengths of 6 inch wide broadcloth and stitched the short ends together until I had two long strips of fabric for the ruffle and one long strip to go around the train portion of the skirt. Once everything was sewn together, I hemmed the bottom edge of the ruffle strips of fabric with a sturdy double turned hem. Truthfully, I do not remember how long these strips of fabric were. I probably have it written down somewhere, but it was a lot of hemming. And then I gathered the unhemmed edge of the ruffle strips with two rows of gathering stitches. Once both of the pieces were gathered to the correct length, I then stitched them to the third piece of fabric. One ruffle was stitched to the bottom edge and the other ruffle was stitched one and a half inches away from the top. And after pressing the top ruffle, I then surged the remaining raw edges and attached it to the underside of my train. I still plan on adding buttons to the belly use so I don't have to stitch it on each time it needs a wash, but that is a task that will be happening in the future. I want to say a huge thank you to Bernadette and Kathy for letting me use their videos, and to Details by Nicole for taking these amazing photos of me. And that is it. My constellation gown is complete. I really hope you enjoyed coming on this journey with me. I had a lot of fun making this gown. I think it was about six weeks from buying the fabric to having it complete. I'm definitely very proud of this gown and yeah I felt like a queen arriving at Costume College in it. So yeah I'm just I'm just glad that I got it done in time. I Gluing on stars right down to the last minute, it was kind of nerve wracking, but I think it also just added to the excitement from the gown because I think I was building up the entire weekend. Um, people would come and visit in my room and I'd be working on the gown. So finishing it on the night, I think, not something I would recommend, but it definitely adds to the excitement if you know you can get it done in time. Now, I would love to hear what were your favorite parts of this three-part series. And if you're going to a fancy dress ball, what theme would your fancy dress be? I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who has been commenting on the videos and liking them and sharing the costuming love in general. You guys are amazing and I can't wait to make more videos. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, Feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. 
If you are new to my channel and you liked what you saw today, feel free to click subscribe because we have fun here. So that is everything for today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!